going off the sinking ship first I'm alluding to and just being chivalrous open doors for her and and treating her like a princess and you know pampering her the prima donna right and uh, and it's okay and it's a beautiful thing actually and it's the way God made the dynamics of it and so he gave the woman he empowered her more she's kind of is more important I mean I hate to say that we're unequal but you get what I'm saying here is that, I mean, if somebody's got to survive the sinking ship, it's the women and children, the baby makers. I mean, and if the only way men can get to these baby makers is to convince them to mate with them, um, then they've got to be loving. They, they're sure not going to do it by force. We're not a brute beast. Men are, we're little gods, just like women. They're little gods too. And we've got to treat each other with that, with full respect, dignity, and free will choice. So you appreciate free will choice, then you've got to give it to others. It's the golden rule right there. Treat others the way you want to be treated. I, I go further and tell people, hey, think about others the way you want to think about them and speak about others the way you would like to be spoken of, as best to your ability. And then behave toward others the way you would like to be behaved to, toward. And all the things that you want for yourself and your family, want for others and their families, okay? Be godly. I mean, this is what I want the theme to be today, is just to be godly. While we're here for this brief time, and of course I opened with talking about my friend Mike that passed, and um, and it sucks. There's no way around it. I mean, death is always bad, it seems like. And this is something that's so important to understand about the message that Christ brought us, was that, hey, listen, listen to me, he said. Look, I have victory over death. Okay, this mortal body of death, this perishable body, have no faith in the flesh. Don't believe in it. We all know. I mean, it's science. It's not being negative or morbid. It's got to go. I don't like the scientific aspect of speaking about death any more than the next guy. I mean, I'm very emotional. I, 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 Hey, man, you get me at someone. I mean, you know, my son passed and my mom passed, my dad passed. I can get very emotional. Okay, so... Uh, I'm not sitting here acting like I don't get it when people weep and wail about a loved one passing. Okay. And I don't have, I'm not, I might act like a man of great faith, but I'm not. Okay. And I don't need to be a man of great faith. None of us do. Just a little bit of faith. Believe in God. Okay. And he will meet all your needs according to his power, his riches, his glory. He can do everything for you that you need done. It's prayer. It's about that relationship. And um, for me, like I said, I mean, I talk about the female a lot because I just know. I just absolutely am certain if I know one thing about myself, I know I need a beloved. I need to be in love. And I am still in love. But it may be just a delusional crush that I have. Hey, you know what? So be it. But I've had real tangible improvements in my life as a result. I mean, the idea that when I fell in love with this lady, uh, everybody knows the gal. It's Lauren. And, you know, it's like, hey, somehow I got it in my head because she knows I exist that she had a crush on me, too. Hey, you know what? So what? OK, maybe she did. They think I'm cute. Whatever. OK, I get it. A lot of girls have thought I was cute. I mean, I was at one point in my life, I was you know, not literally, but metaphorically beating them off with a stick because they were just wearing me out. I mean, I just couldn't do it. And then, of course, you know, you start getting, well, I never got any serious STDs, thank God. But, I mean, you know, that kind of stuff happens. And uh, you fool around too much, the promiscuity. And it, it it's bad for the soul, too. And so I don't approve of, like, these short-term relationships people get into for a year or two or three, whatever. And then they just, oh, well, you know, it didn't work out. I don't get that. See, I've never been that kind of a person. I learned from a very young age, I just wanted to be with one woman. I want the same woman over and over and over. I'd still be with my first wife if I had my choice. Okay, but that ship has sailed a long time ago. And, you know, you let dead dogs lie for the most part. I don't bother her, and I haven't for a long time. I never stalked her, harassed her. But I did look after my daughters because they were in the mix. And uh, I'm not going to go all into that, but I, I just, what I'm emphasizing is on values, is that I value a woman very much. 
okay? And that's coming from a guy that spent a huge segment of his life single. And it, 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 I've enjoyed my life. That's not it. I just, I'm very grateful for my life. I've had a really good life. And I just thank God for it every day just to exist and enjoy little things in life, the simple things. I've got been given a lot. I still, like I said, I've got two daughters that are grown, and they're, they're beautiful women. And it's just thank God that he helped me to raise them. And, but I'm just not content, and I could never be content without a beloved. And But, you know, the idea of bringing her into my home, and, I, you know, I got cleaner and everything. I made all kinds of home improvements and everything about my life, every facet I got it kind of like kicked me into gear when I fell in love with her. And I thought, man, oh man, now I could really see myself holding her in my arms. Okay, not only going through life with her and doing everything imaginable with her that all guys want to do with their ladies, but to go through eternity with her. I mean, I had a dream about her and I felt like our souls merged. And I mean, it was a heavy, psychologically, it really played on me. So I got really nutty, and I'm still a bit nutty. You can hear the way I'm talking, but hey, you know what? God's helping me through it, and it's only by God's help. Knowing what I have to remember is that as, as head over heels as I am in love with this gal, you know, hey, look, there's, there's, there's millions of better men out there. So, I mean, I, I've got to first, you know, hit myself over the head with that reality. And secondly, but I'll tell you this much is that I, I do not believe, I believe it's impossible that any of them would be smitten as much as me. And it, and it does have to do with the dream I had, very real dream of merging souls with this woman. But what is most important that God conveys to you when you pray about these really, really heavy duty issues, I mean, if your wife, let's say a guy's head over heels in love with his wife and he's got kids, I mean, that, that's the worst case. And he really wants to protect the kids and wants to make the marriage work. And he's screwed up, she's screwed up, but she's calling it quits or he's calling it quits. I mean, it could be work either way, but they really want the marriage to work. They're going to be completely heartbroken, devastated. I mean, it's just like a nuclear bomb going off in your soul. I had a pastor I sat down with and I was trying to explain how I felt with him and he said, yeah, I know. It's like a chainsaw. Somebody taking a rear cut and you jaggedly just right in half. And I, he, he got it. He understood. I mean, that was the best allegory I could think of. It felt so bad to lose her. And I was so insanely jealous, too. I never killed anyone. But I, I let the guys know that she was, I mean, they were around my little girls. And, you know, they had to know that, you know, I was the boss, at least of them. And, you know, I mean, I let them know that I felt protective about their mother, too. And uh, I couldn't help that. I mean, I, I, you know, there's just a little macho in every guy. I mean, he just, you know, he, he's in love still. And here's a guy that, you you know, you're, you can entrust with your beloved. I mean, you don't have no choice. It's what she wants. It's what she gets or vice versa. And they're going to be around your kids. And you got to vet them a little, at least let them know, hey, you know, I'll respect you, but you've got to respect me and be sensitive. You know, a little sensitivity here in this whole dynamic. So, um, anyhow, but uh, jealousy is one of those things for me. It, it can hurt so good if she doesn't take it too far. And for women, I'm sure it's the same thing. I mean, sure, I, I you know, I've made women jealous not even knowing it. That's how thick. I mean, yeah, I can be a genius just like all of us are genius in some way, but we're also thick as a brick in other ways. But I learned the hard way, the school of hard knocks, as they say, that you don't do that. You've got to be very cognizant. You've got to be very sensitive, intuitive with a woman. And you've got to know the things that bug her without her telling you. You understand, guys? And that's tough because there's a whole lot of things. Men have a whole lot of issues they trip up on. And Lust is number one. I mean, we're just very lustful. I mean, this wandering eye and you just just reveling over females. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, we can rationalize it very easily. We say, well, look, I mean, even godly men, believing men, they say, hey, well, these are God's creations. He made these females in his image and likeness. Uh, he dotes over them. What's wrong with me doting over them? 
But you see, when you're married, it's a form of adultery, like Christ said. I mean, anybody that looks at a woman lustfully has already created, uh, committed adultery with her in his heart. And that is ubiquitous with men, uh, unanimous, practically, I would say. It really is. I mean, if we're going to be honest, for every almost every normal man, man, I, okay, I, I mean, look, I know some men prefer men, and, you know, I'm not going to get into that. But generally speaking, a woman is very important to him. And if he's got a beloved, he's got to respect her. And he's got to care very much about the things she cares about. And he's got to step up to the plate and be the kind of man that she needs to be satisfied with. Otherwise, she's going to get a wandering eye. And we approach these things differently. And nowadays, it's just as common for women to have affairs as men. So they go off and they, hey, you know what, this guy makes me happy. And there's just a slew of men. There's a whole category of men out there that they don't want single women. All this the fish in the sea, but what they want is your wife. They get some kind of a power trip. They got a messiah complex. I don't know what it is. I'm not one of those kind of men. I'm not a homewrecker. I don't get involved in troubled marriages. I don't even get involved in troubled relationships between a boyfriend and a girlfriend. But anyhow, I think I have exhausted this issue about the male-female thing. But guys, respect the woman. And don't, you know, don't give your milk away for free. Okay, you bulls. Okay. I mean, why buy the bull if the milk is free, saith the woman, right? So what the, the price is is a commitment. That's what I want. I just want somebody that's going to commit themselves, you know, for richer, for poorer, for better, for worse, all that kind of stuff. So I want someone that really wants me because I am a unique, one-of-a-kind individual for my character, for just who I am. I mean, just that's it. I, I, that's what I want. I want a woman that just wants me, that really likes me and says, here's a guy that just really wants to please a woman. I mean, what more can you ask for, ladies? I mean, what will I do for you? I don't know, but I know I want a woman that's interested in me for me. And this is one of the reasons I'm glad I'm not a rich dude, because you're, it's always going to be in the back of your mind. If you're a rich dude, well, was she attracted more for my money or was it my personality, my character? Or, I mean, what did she like about me? You know, so that's where I'm coming from. And because I, I really I don't mind getting rich, but, uh, you know, I, it, it, in terms of my priorities and values, it's, it's, it's way down at the bottom compared to the woman, a woman that wants me for me, not because I got a lot of money. You understand? So that's a big problem for me. Psychologically, I have big issues with money, just like everybody else out there. Yes, I love money for what it's worth, what I can do with it. I mean, God understands. I mean, you would to lie to God about this, but I also detest it. I disdain it. I hate money. I, I see what it does in our in our hearts and minds. It so easily corrupts us. And in throughout history and society, I mean civilization, what it's done. You know how many murders? I mean, what do you think God thinks about this? You know, though it's written that those things highly valued among men are detestable in the sight of God. So what are those things? They're material possessions, right? Highly, well, the gold, I value my treasure chest filled with gem, precious stones and gems and gold and silver and uh, precious metals and, and all this, right? Well, what is the, what buys you all those things, right? That's just in one neat little package. It's a thing, an entity called money, right? A substance, whatever you want to call it. Money, money will buy you all that stuff, all the possessions you want, all get you all the materialism you want. And God finds this abhorrent, detestable in his sight. You understand? And our values must be in line with his. So the things that I teach and preach are stuff a child literally can understand. Jesus made that very clear. He said, lest ye be like little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. How is a little child? Pure of heart, innocent not corrupted. They get corrupted pretty early. They start getting, I mean, they're smart. They're human beings. They're, you know, they're smarter than the average monkey. Any human being is. And they get it. They start getting the dynamics and they get money. Here, mom and dad fighting about money and all this. They get it. 
from a very young age. And, and they can, their hearts and minds can get corrupted from it. And they have problems. I mean, is he, we hear of children killing, committing suicide. I mean, do you think we're, we're, they see, they can read the writing on the wall. They know they're, they're being brought into a hyper, hypersensitive, uh, I, I mean, a hyper uh, competitive uh, situation that just gets harder and harder. The social Darwinism, dog eat dog, rat race, uh, the bar keeps getting higher and harder to reach. The nut keeps getting harder to crack. The hamster wheel keeps getting harder to turn. I mean, little kids can see this, what's going on in our society, the breakdown out there. The wealth imbalance keeps growing. Poverty keeps growing. The need for a social welfare state keeps growing. And everybody said, this is normal. Well, somehow there's a rhyme and reason and you know, all the crime that's induced from financial desperation because somebody doesn't have a few bucks in their pockets and I got to listen to all these a-holes out there, all these evildoers that object to a universal basic 